प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह बोलो घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बलोवेड भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्य पाद पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो इन ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज जय स्वामी नारायण यू नो एज हिंदूज एंड मोर ओवर डिवोटीज ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण we tend to follow many rites and rituals for example mahapujas just like the one that we did abhishek yagnas even our daily puja donations festivals these are all rites and rituals that we tend to follow on a daily basis because it's part of our culture it's part of our tradition that's what we do as devotees and as you can say just one who is associated with an ethnicity such as hinduism if it was different religions they would follow different rules and different have different rights but as hindus there are such kinds of traditions now today i want to talk about an infamous tradition a ritual that all of us perform on a daily basis because many many kids request to me that you've done lectures but this particular one we want to listen on because it we do it every day yet we don't know there's many many things like that we do on a daily basis but we just don't know the definition or we just don't know what it means so let me give you a couple of hints here and there we sing it every morning and night it's a part of our tradition without it our day is not even complete and our adi guru sadguru muktan swami has composed it you know have you played that game who am i we played it with the kids on saturday um upstairs and it was interesting uh who am i is a game where there's different different people historic and anyone and you're given clues about the the person for example I'm the 16th president of the United States. I chopped the cherry hill da- cherry tree down. Who am I? Obviously Abraham Lincoln. In the same exact fashion, for this particular hints that I gave you, what am I? That's my question to you. Let me give you it again. We sing it every day in the morning and night. It's a daily tradition in our Samran sect particularly and the composers The composer is Sadguru Muktan Swami. What am I? That's one thing. You got anything else besides the arti? Sure. The arti is the exact answer I'm looking for. Yes, the arti. Kids they've requested me do this arti explain to me, explain what it is, why you do it, how you do it. the whole gist of it the whole round of it well i'm going to explain today what the arti is jay is the guru swami we sing it daily yet we don't know what it means but the outline and our breakdown for today is what is the arti the purpose of the arti the ritual and the history behind the arti these are a couple things we want to go through so first and foremost what is the arti obviously when people look the arti is just oh waving the lamps of wicks around the idol of god and singing if any person from the outside not us but from stranger came and came into the assembly and sat down and the arti was going on that exact period of time what would they think what would be on their mind first and foremost he or she would not know the words so there would be no meaning but moreover they would think that this orange clothed person is waving lamps wicks around the idol of god and then in the end doing this 
and then holding it up in the air. And there's devotees imagining taking the arti and placing it over their head. This is just a brief definition that we think of that this is the arti, that's it. But moreover, on a deeper perspective, it's a ritual that expresses devotion and respect to God. It's a symbol of welcoming Bhagwan. Give me, let me give you an example. The President of the United States, Mr. Barack Obama, who is your leader, of course, all of you U.S. citizens uh, and green card holders, obviously. Uh, when he goes in any public area, what is the first thing people do? Stand up and give him a standing ovation, right? Meaning clap their hands and then sit back down. This is a sign of welcoming. If you look even closer, on a deeper perspective, when the President of the United States, in his White House, there is military men and women, and they stand at door to guard. When the President is just walking by the hallway, or just walking, what do they do? Salute. And then after he leaves, they put the salute down. Have you seen that? We had a parade here. I don't think all of you remember. We had a parade here a couple months ago, and the parade was across this whole street, and army generals and army military, any time a commander or anyone highly ranked came by, they would salute and then they would put it down. In the same particular manner, this is just a symboling or a welcoming of Bhagwan that please come and please give us your darshan. Please come and accept our form of worship. The arti is nothing but a mode of worship. Just like how we do the nine forms of devotion, the arti is just a particular form of worship. So it's a waving of wicks in a clockwise direction, welcoming and singing the glory of God. Now, obviously, the ceremony of lights during which devotees seek protection, benediction, and moksha, meaning now, back into our perspective, into our shoes. As devotees, what do we seek? Moksha, and we sing protection from Bhagwan. that if we do the arti, Bhagwan will protect us. If we do the arti, Bhagwan will look towards us. If we do the arti, Bhagwan will grant us something. These are just some of the thoughts that we have going on in our head. But moreover, arti is not just a welcoming, but arti is, you can say, a limb. Just like how in our body we have two arms, two legs, arti is a limb in our body. Without it, we just can't function. Without it, our day is incomplete. Without it, we just can't be called a proper devotee. That's how integrated, that's how deeply rooted, that's how strong and firm Arti is in the Swaminarayan sect. That's why for all of you kids, you know, I get uh, kids telling me that in the morning I have to catch a bus because I'm very late or I woke up late, so, you know, I'm always late, so I can't do the Arti when my grandparents do the Arti in the morning. Well, if you can't perform in the morning, then obviously at nighttime, because it happens twice a day, you can always perform it, and still it would be considered part of your devotion, it would still be considered that Bhagwan looked towards you and Bhagwan is pleased upon you because you followed this mini tradition. But moreover, the history is very interesting. First, let's take a look at ancient history. Ancient history in the form of, you know, I was reading a book, Hindu Rites and Rituals, and the reason why they even light up the wicks the arti itself is because in temples in ancient times the daylight or the sunlight did not reach inside where the shrine was due to that the pujaris due to that the saints who served the mandir they you can say invented or thought up of you know lighting wicks just like a candle and performing the arti so bhagwan's each and every limb each and every body part can be seen. This is a scientific definition, 
And this is in ancient terms. This is, that's what they did. That's why they performed Arti. But in the history for our Bhagwan Swaminarayan, I want to tell you, let's go back in time 220 years ago when Bhagwan Swaminarayan Sajan Swami was around. So here goes the Arti story about how the Arti, the history of Arti, how it was, came into play in our Swaminarayan Sampradaya. So, first and foremost, Sadguru Raman Swami, everyone knows, is the Guru of Sajan Swami, Sri Ji Maharaj, or Bhagwan Swami Narayan, as we know. Now, he is also the Guru of Muktan Swami. So, Muktan Swami had very deep affection towards Raman Swami before meeting Sajan Swami. So, so much affection that he, didn't, he looked at Raman Swami as God himself. He did not know Sajan Swami's glory. This is all a role. Obviously, he knew everything, but just to show us, that's what he did. So, at that time, Raman Swami, what he had done was he had given his, you can say, seat to Sajan Swami and made him the successor of the Uddhav Sampradaya in the village of Jetpur. Muktan Swami was pleased by this. This was his you can say Guru Bhakti, that Muktan Swami came before Sajan Swami. Muktan Swami was elder. Muktan Swami had numerous sadguns, good qualities. Yet, when Raman Swami gave the gadi or the throne to Sadguru, uh, you can say, or Sajan Swami, right there, Muktan Swami did not argue or Muktan Swami did not say that why I was here before him but he accepted it that was his das bow you can say after giving it away Raman Swami shortly passed away but Muktan Swami had a confusion in his mind that Raman Swami was God to me yet he left me like this and now he became sad and gloomy because he had no other attachment in the world besides Raman and Swami Sajan Swami was not that great of a figure in his mind at that time. So, Sajan Swami was in the village of Kalvani with his saints and devotees. And Muktan Swami also joined along and he was there. And Sajan Swami and his saints went to a nearby river to bathe. Muktan Swami shortly followed behind and he was thinking of Raman Swami, all the incidents. And all of a sudden, a flash of light came. A flash of light came right in front of Muktan Swami, kind of like a projector, you know? And right there, just like imagine if we had a TV screen right in front of us, he could see a movie of Raman and Swami. Raman and Swami told him, Why are you worried? Remember what I told you? I'm just a mere drum beater. The real star is Sajan Swami. Everything. The whole, you can say, Lord of Lords, the incarnations of incarnations is Sajan Swami. Why are you still focused on me? This is what he asked. Don't worry, Muktan Swami, I bless you now. So, Muktan Swami, at that time, after listening to his Guru's words, he became very calm. And after that, all his, you know, gloominess, all his doubts broke. And after then he went to the river, took a bath, and then he collected flowers, and then he made some wicks from the art and made an arti, and went to where Sajan Swami was residing and performed the arti as we know it. Jai Sadguru Swami, Prabhu Jai Sadguru Swami, Sajananda Dayaru, Sajananda Dayaru, Badavanta Bahunami, Prabhu Jai Sadguru Swami. After performing the arti, Muktan Swami was at peace. But when, when Raman Swami cleared his doubts up, that then after. The whole history is just a simple, you know, incident from, you know, Raman Swami meeting or giving Gopan or giving Sajan Swami the throne and then the Artha being performed, and then that's it. But there's a deeper message. The deeper message is this whole Arthi meaning has to do with the glory, the greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And when Muktan Swami realized that this 
is not a mere devotee or disciple of Raman Swami, but this is God Himself, not only God Himself, but the Supreme God. That's when in His heart these words came out, and these words mean none other than the glory of Bhagwan Swamiran, who is the Supreme Lord Himself. So, all of you first and asked what is Arati, we explained it. After that, the purpose of the Arati, the ritual where the ritual is after the Arati is performed, everyone, you know, there is a couple of small rituals I had to go over that first and foremost, when it's lit, then the Arati is performed. The Arati is performed around the limbs or you can say the body parts of Bhagwan. After that, the Arati is given to Bhagwan. Then it's put down and then water in a shell is circulated three times around the arti. I don't know if you knew what that means. There's obviously a meaning. But water has a deuta, meaning a deity, and it's called a varun. It's the water deity. So all the light that Bhagwan we extracted from performing the arti, Bhagwan's tej, Bhagwan's divineness, is all inside of the fire, the arti itself. Now to keep it bound so we can also obtain that divine light. The Varun Deuta, the water, is circled around clockwise three times. And that Deuta makes a boundary around the Arti. Then it's held up in the air. When it's held up in the air, we take our hands. And when we're doing this, we're actually taking the divine light, taking the Prakash, taking Bhagwan's, you can say, goodness, and we are transforming it into ourself. This is the ritual. This is the process. Meaning, whatever good qualities Bhagwan has, we want obviously in ourself. So we become pure. The way to do it is by taking the arti. So whenever you know kids come and they're giving out the arti, do not be lazy or do not forget to take arti and do not consider or think that this is nothing. But take the arti and think about Bhagwan's light will come into myself. While doing the arti, think about that this is not an ordinary Bhagwan, but this is a supreme Lord of Lords. Think about his glory and then do the arti. So in while performing this method of worship, Bhagwan becomes pleased. So this was just a small request that kids had told me about and I wanted to cover. And uh, it's pretty much just the gist of my uh, lecture for today. Uh, now uh, we want to go to Pujya Rushi Swami's lecture. Uh, so I want to introduce Pujya Rushi Vallab Swami. Ganesham Marajani Jai. वर्णिवेशरमणीय दर्शनम् मंदहासरचिरानामबुजम् पूजितम् सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदनम् हम विचिन्तय श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनी ओल्मेटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलोड गणश्याम महाराज और पूज्य गुरुजी Pujya Bhagat Ji and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Now, the day before yesterday, you have most of the devotees and non-devotees have enjoyed the sopping 
बिकॉज ऑफ ब्लैक फ्राइडे राइट Why people going for more shopping on the day of Black Friday? Because in most stores and most malls there there is sale. And in the sale people get the ex, uh, the same thing within uh in the half cost. meaning a uh, minimum cost they have not to spend more money and for for this benefit people used to used to uh, do their shopping on black friday now the principle behind this is that getting maximum benefit by the costing of minimum effort or minimum cost this is the only benefit of uh shopping on black friday right okay on spirituality or in our religion is there any black friday or not because as a human being our nature is to get maximum benefit by our minimum endeavor or minimum cost this also we apply in our spiritual life now the same thing describe in the vachanamrut because there is no question there is no phenomena remain left which are which is not included or explained in the vachanamrut there is no thing for this Muktanan Swami asks for our benefit. Muktanan Swami asks Rishi Maharaj, the scriptures have described innumerable spiritual endeavors to please God, but amongst them all, which one is so powerful that it alone earns as much pleasure of God as it earned by performing all spiritual endeavor combined? Muktanan Swami's question is that. Maharaj there are so many and innumerable spiritual endeavor described in the scriptures there are thousands types of hindu scriptures we know about it now upon those scriptures there are millions of commentaries which meaning we can consider that is not in our mind we cannot believe the thousands of meaning of the same words now in those scriptures there are millions and billions of ways described only for attaining the one thing and that is the ultimate liberation everybody want to go after the days in the bar of god but just as in this world we also in this world we also want to go to our homeland at baroda but there is many other ways to reach there one flight is for new york to delhi and delhi to bombay and then baroda now the another is direct to bombay and then baroda now in the same way in spiritual world our final destination is one and that is to attain the ultimate liberation to reach into the divine abode of bhagwan this is what our destination but to reach there we have so many ways which is described in the scriptures but muktanand swami asked bhagwan muktanand swami knew about those innumerable ways <coughs> and that's why he asked maharaj maharaj there are so many ways described in the scriptures but how can i perform so many ways so many endeavor to please you so that i can have the innumerable enjoyment and 
eternal happiness in your divine abode aksardham because our life has no any certainty our date is certain but when our date and where our date that is not certain that is the most uncertainty in our life and that's why we cannot perform all of the endeavors which is described in the scriptures and that's why muktanand swami asked for us only one way muktanand swami asked bhagwan show me one way so that i can directly reach with minimum cost minimum effort just like people used to do same thing in black friday get maximum benefit get maximum enjoyment by casting off minimum money same way sri ji maharaj given the reply maharaj says please listen as i tell you the one spiritual endeavor by which god can be pleased he then continued accepting the form refuge of god is the simple single greatest endeavor amongst all spiritual endeavors for pleasing god that refuse though must be extremely firm and firm and without any fault so now taking the refuge of bhagwan this is the easiest way to reach his abode our final destination just as people used to buy most their enjoyable things on black friday because of their half of cost the cost of attaining ultimate liberation or having a per, becoming a per, permanent resident of bhagwan's divine abode aksardham we cannot count that cost we cannot have ability to pay that cost pay their our effort but bhagwan has given here a cell only a minimum cost bhagwan says only one and single endeavor that is to accept our all our everything to god accept the form refuge of bhagwan and that is a single and only endeavor to please maharaj and when maharaj will please upon us he'll grant us ultimate liberation and the his divine abad aksardham now we have the address of this mall which have this cell cell of ultimate liberation and that is faith in uh that is a uh, from refuge of bhagwan but now what is the way to reach their mall bhagwan describe here the three types three ways just as you come here in the mandir from your house there are many ways now from depart from this mandir and to you want to go to your home there are also the different ways but you select only one you cannot walk on two ways by the same time same way bhagwan describe here the way to reach that mall which can offer you the ultimate liberation in the minimum cost Bhagwan described the three ways one way of having the refuge of God is with blind faith the second one is that is cultivated uh, the second type is from refuge of God that is cultivated out of love and third type is with understanding now just calculate it. as a human being we always think of uh, uh, think of our profit <clears throat> in the third way the way of understanding we have not high intellectual person we are of we are having a very short intellect and 
with our this intellect we cannot acquire we cannot get all the knowledge of the scriptures nor we can understand the sagun and nirgun aspect of bhagwan nor we can understand fully the anvay and vyatirak form of bhagwan his nature his human like natures his divine natures we cannot fully grasp all these things so this is very tough for us now think for the second type that is cultivated out of love now bhagwan has described in the vachanamrut that when we have a same amount of love for bhagwan and his son and his devotees just as we have love for our bodies and our relatives but as most of the devotees cannot renounce the home and re- uh, relatives so it definitely we can see that they have no the same amount of love for the bhagwan and his son now this is also not possible for us but the first way that is refuse of Bhag- uh, the refuse of Bhag- god is with blind faith this is the easiest way to reach the mall which can offer uh, offer to us the ultimate liberation with the minimum cost so blind faith what is the faith you have a faith in a barber whenever you go to barber shop even if he had a razor in his hand razor can cut your thought it can damage your body even it can take your life but still you have faith in barber and so you offer your head to barber now you have you are worried about your wealth your gas and jewelry in your house you protect your house with advanced security system because you have faith in security system government provide and facilitate the people with the police and other security and armed guards because they have faith in armed guards but still the cases of stealing the cases of robbery and the cases of misdoing and many other cases happen in the society people have faith in the insurance company so they take the insurance policy for their homes their cars their property their wealth even their body also but the insurance company most time cannot give you the full amount what you have losses but now you just think about the faith in god bhagwan has given us this in comparable eyes bhagwan has given us two eyes so that we can see all this world we can also see his form bhagwan has given us this speech so that we can sing his kirtans we can speak about his glory we can talk with each other still we have no faith in god even though bhagwan has facilitate all these things to us without any charge if you install the security system in your house you have to pay for it if you take your insurance policy you have to pay for its premium <clears throat> but bhagwan has never asked anything from us bhagwan gives provides us water without any charge no any human made factory can produce water bhagwan has given us free of charge oxygen still we have no faith in god we cannot offer our own self to bhagwan if we have faith in bhagwan then we can offer our all to bhagwan 
just as we offer our head to the barber. If we cannot understand these facilities provided by Maharaj, still we should think about his words. Bhagwan has given his words in the Vaishnavaru that I have asked from my Guru Ramanand Swami that not a single devotee of mine can remain without food, water, clothes, etc. Not only these, but if he had he had to encounter any kind of misery or pain, let your devotees become happy and all of the pains remains on me, remains on uh, remains for me. So Bhagwan has given his words and this is the certificate of declaration that everything of his devotees is, is belongs to Maharaj, meaning his pain and sorrow, our misery and our miserable days, our miserable moment, second, our every pain and sorrow is not on our part, but it's the all on the part of Bhagwan. This is the words of Bhagwan. But if we have faith in Bhagwan, now this time in U.S., the President, Mr. Barack Obama, they ha he had declared the policy of Obamacare for those who cannot pay for his health, who cannot earn much. Now Bhagwan has declared his own care before even our birth. Bhagwan has declared that no one of my devotee, no one of my refuge who has taken my refuge cannot remain without food, water and clothes and even he cannot remain without health, facilities and everything, without homes. But we have faith in the words of Mr. Barack Obama, his laws. But we have no faith in the words of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, who is supreme. We have no words, uh, we have no faith in the words of Bhagwan, who has declared before even our birth that I will protect you. Even though Obamacare have not even paid us even once a time. But Bhagwan has protected us at the time of birth. Not only that, but after birth, in our life we have got many accidents, many incidents in which we can have many diseases. But still Bhagwan has protected us from this kind of miseries. But still we have no faith. So without depending only upon the Obamacare, we have to become cautious about our Swaminarayan care. Bhagwan has asked all of his devotees pain and sorrow, everything about his own head. So we have no worry about this thing. Now we have talk about faith. But what the exact characteristic of the person who has faith in Bhagwan, who has faith in the form of Maharaj as well as in the form of his Ekantik son. Now for this, we should refer the Vachnamrud third of Loya chapter. In this Vachnamrut, Sri Jimaraj said when he described the exact definition of the person who has from faith in the form of Bhagwan as well as his Ekantik Sant. Now let me see what Bhagwan says. Sri Jimaraj replied of the 
question of Bhagavadananda Swami and Sivananda Swami. The question is that what are the characteristics of a person who has faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory? Sriji Maharaj said, what would a person who has faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory not do for the sake of God and his son? For them he would renounce his family, renounce any fear of public reduction public criticism, renounce a kingdom, renounce pleasures, renounce wealth, renounce his wife and in the case of a woman, she will renounce her husband. We have no need to renounce such things even these days. Because Bhagwan or Sant, they are not sayers, they are not commanders to renounce these things. They are just said as they are just saying us to perform only the rituals which is described in Sikshapatri and Vachanamrut. Our duty is to remain only under the commands of Sikshapatri and Vachanamrut, meaning under the words of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But the, the another, uh, we can consider the another definition of our faith is that if we have faith in the form of Bhagwan, then we should have the faith as what I have attained is definitely the Bhagwan himself. Not only this, but he is the Supreme. He is the Lord, he is the Lord of Lords. There is no one on this earth, not on beyond the earth, who can to whom we can compare with the Supreme Bhagwan. Not only this, but the form of Bhagwan means the Supreme Lord Swaminarayan I have attained. He is the all doer. Whether he will give me a happiness or misery, but that is definitely give me a benefit whether I can see it or not but in future that same misery or happiness give me the ultimate happiness eternal happiness now the second part just we have our from faith in the form of our beloved our supreme lord Swami Narayan in the same way we should have the firm faith. Even Bhagwan used here words blind faith. We have to blind faith in the form of Ekantik Sant. Just as we have attained the Ekantik Sant of Bhagwan in the form of our Puja Guruji, we have to blind faith in our mind that this is a true Ekantik Sant of Sriji Maharaj and that's why I have attained his refuge and as I am a disciple of him he can definitely protect me from misbehavior from any kind of uh, enemy like uh, inner enemies like lust, anger, avarice etc. and also he can protect me from outer enemies meaning Kusan and not only this but as our Puja Guruji is the Paramekantik Sant and that's why according to the Vachanamrata he can grant us the ultimate liberation so we have the form faith blind faith in the form of Puja Guruji and his Santo that they always grant <coughs> They always give me only such a knowledge and they always show me such a way that all that the way is always lead me to ultimate liberation. Guruji's command and Santo's command always give me the eternal happiness. This this is what the type of faith we should keep in the form of Sriji Maharaj as well as our Puja Guruji. 
now in the history of our sampraday our fellowship sri ji marad narrated the stories of the following devotees who had such kind of from faith blind faith in the form of bhagwan as well as his dear most saints bhagwan has described the story of first rajput galuji of the village dadu sir now who was this devotees who forever remember in the vachanamrut from from for uh, by all of the devotees these devotees rajput galuji galuji was a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he was of a uh, village dadu sir now once upon a time sri ji maharaj was in the village gadda he had wrote a letter and sent the letter to galuji in the letter he had sri ji maharaj had wrote in the letter that the strict command galuji accept my blessing with jai swami narayan and whatever you do forget and remain those all the activities as they are and you immediately leave your village with all of your wealth and belongings and you as early as possible reach to gadda this is my command for you and don't and don't uh and don't bring your mother with you in gadda so when galuji read this message he immediately pack up all of his belongings from his home and he load all of his belongings in his cart and he without any question and without without having any doubt in the words of maharaj he immediately as he has faith in the words of sri ji maharaj he immediately leaves his village on the same day what happened in the village his uh, he had many enemies and they gather they gather in the 50 numbers of enemies they gather and they decided they made a plan to kill a galuji and destroy his homes and his property and everything now at the night the all of these 50 men they have covered the boundaries of the home of galuji and when they enter in the house there is nothing only a one coat and his mother on laying on the bed there is n- no any belongings there is no any furniture there is nothing in the house when they ask galuji's mother about galuji then his mother described what was happened before that evening galuji's mother said to the to the enemies of galuji that my supreme lord swaminarayan has written and he had commanded galuji immediately leave this village with all of his belongings and that's why he immediately leave this village with his all of the belongings and that's why he is right now you cannot find galuji here then all of those enemies they understood the glory of our beloved and the supreme lord swaminarayan they understood their omniscient power of bhagwan swaminarayan and they believe that now swaminar is the real and supreme god because they knew before we come here and that's why he had commanded his duty for saving his life and in this way we can see that 
Bhagwan Swaminar has saved his uh, saved life of his devotees but on the other side we can also understand by the story that Galuji has from faith in the words of Sri Ji Maharaj so that he can save his life otherwise in the time of adverse situation Sri Ji Maharaj has wrought the letter and commanded in the letter for all of his devotees to store the grains and food for for even minimum a year but most there are so many devotees they have no from faith in the words of sri ji maharaj and that's why they have no make any provisions for food and grains for a year and that's why they have to suffer some period for a period in misery they have a shortage of food and uh, grains not uh, not doubt bhagwan swaminar is the most compassionate bhagwan and that's why he had given and boon to those devotees and he had saved their lives also but we should have the firm faith in the words of bhagwan as well as his dear most saints his paramekantic saint like purja guruji this is what we should have we should keep faith in the form of bhagwan and his saint now i am talking about black friday because the people used to do shopping on the black friday because of their because of getting maximum benefit from the uh, by the costing of minimum money in the same way there are innumerable or we can say millions of spiritual endeavor described in the scriptures there are so many ways to reach the ultimate liberation still we have so many limitations we cannot understand the fully the meanings of the scriptures we cannot live long so that we can perform all of those endeavors and that's why bhagwan swaminarayan has described this easiest way in the form of blind faith in the form of bhagwan as well as in the form of his ekantik son now we have everything we have our destination we have the easiest way and we have this sasang fellowship so that we can easily live according to the commands of bhagwan swami narayan and easily reach our destination that is ultimate liberation or we can say the final redemption in the form of enjoying the eternal and divine pleasure in the divine abar of bhagwan swami narayan aksardham this is what we have everything bhagwan has given us everything now even after getting a uh, address of the mall even after standing for hours in a queue for getting a uh, maximum benefit by minimum cost in the mall if we cannot enjoy the thing which we buy from the mall then what is the meaning of our all the life or our all those hours which we have spent while standing in a queue same way we have everything bhagwan has given us everything the way the means the understanding what we need to understand those words he has provided us teacher in the form of his saints now he has given us everything now it is our own part to perform his commands as written in the sikshapatri and his words in the vachanamrut and live our life according to if we cannot understand the sikshapatri or vachanamrut 
we can have a son in the form of our puja guruji so that if we pass our life only and only according to his ways his words then we have nothing to do more than that and we will enjoy everything in the abar of bhagwan swami narayan aksardham by saying this my humble jai swami narayan श्री घनश्याम महाराज निजय श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेवेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्म वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज निजय